to, without any further ado, my question is, I wrote a story about people who I found really fascinating, really interesting, these characters, but they're really wacky people. <laughs> and I know that um, when you got, I saw some looks and some faces in casting, and when we started to you know, talk and do rehearsals and so forth about you know, how we approach these characters, which you know, really, in some ways, are not really uh, very pleasant, but in other ways, maybe a little fun. So uh, I want to ask you what some of the uh, difficulties were and what some of the techniques were that you applied to create these characters. So let's just start with Amina here. And well, whoever wants to, after Amina, raise your hand. Okay, I'll go first. Um, well, when I got the sides, it said something like an elderly white lady, something like that. So I was like, why am I going in for the, oh, I was being typecast, as usual. And uh, so I I actually was um, very happy that Victor cast me because I felt like he was thinking outside of the box and he was trying to um, cast um, what, what he wanted as opposed to maybe what was written on the page there, the essence of what he wanted. Um, I'm about as different from Serena as you could possibly get. Um, the thing that I latched on to her was that she was a true believer. Doris was her best friend, and she absolutely believed, and no matter where the story was going, my job was to just say yes to everything. And, um, and Victor gave me a lot of freedom with that, and I appreciate that. Okay, so... Um, Tennessee Williams, Katnahaten Roof, the role of Maggie. Tennessee Williams wrote in his introduction that when he was a young, um, when he was a young man, he saw a bunch of little girls jump roping, and there was one little girl that was on the side that no one was paying any attention to, and she started screaming, um, "What about me? Pay attention to me! Pay attention to me!" And that, for me, is flow. It's it's that that love that you know she. She's a really good person, even though she seems like this nosy, busybody, crazy lady. All she wants is pay attention to me, like we all do down deep. And she really loves Doris. And so, but the Tennessee Williams quote is what I, I found how I found my flow. I thought, well, she's that girl. She's that little girl that wants to pay attention to me. So, there you go. Um, Mara Lee, I had to realize that I like fake nails and fake eyelashes and. Like, <laughs> um, and uh, I also like men and money and books, so I had to re dig really deep for that. <laughs> Thank goodness I've got the microphone again because I failed to add one more credit to my, uh, and I would be killed uh, by someone who I brought with me. Um, who was the producer of the film that I was in, and it was uh, a film called Poppies, obviously of an opium eater, so, and it's um, the, uh, uh, poppiesthemovie.com. Anyway, he would kill me if I didn't mention that. But um, for me, we've all been drunk, I mean, most of us anyway. I didn't have much uh, research on that. We've all been there. Um, but, but, I, but I do want to ask you one thing. Um, when we were shooting the scene where Tallulah and I, I I walk out of the closet as a shadow. Um, I asked Victor, did I do what we're shooting? And he said, well, no, we'll leave, we'll leave it up to the audience to decide. Now that we're here, did, did I, with all those? Yes. But that's, that's okay, all right. <laughs> Besides from that, uh, um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't a whole lot of uh, research for me to, to do the drunk part. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, unlike Mr. Typecast over here, um, <laughs> I'm not a psychic, and, um, and I have no idea what a psychic, like how that process works at all. Um, what fascinated me the most about the character of Doris was how reluctant she is to sort of uh, deal with that part of herself, and how it just happens to her, and then she just has to sort of make her life fit around these things that are happen and I, happening to her. And, and I loved her skepticism about all of it. Um, so a lot of the time I felt like I was always in the process of trying to understand what was happening to me and react to it. So um, it, it made it a lot of fun uh, to actually do the scenes over and over because I always, 
I was always discovering like, oh my God, what's happening now? I'm channeling a guy. And, and, uh, um, and a lot of the channeling stuff was actually very technical. You know, I, I, I came up with some, since I didn't really, I'd never channeled anyone, I, um, and Victor and I worked together on this, a, a lot of the, the technical <laughs> techniques of like, how, how might this occur and, and how can we make it believable? And hopefully we did okay. <laughs> I almost didn't. Sorry, I almost didn't make it to the audition. Actually, um, I was on set and I had that period makeup on, and like my teeth were all they had glue on them to make them less white. And when I got there, <laughs> no. Anyway, we all, I think, all of us, well, except for the men, we all read for the part of Doris. So on the callback, I went in and Victor and Jaime and Zora were there. And they were like, that was beautiful. Now, can you read this? <laughs> and I did, and it clicked, and it was wonderful. And when we were on set, our first day, first day for me anyway, was out in Boron. It was hot and crazy hot in this little house that you saw up there. And I had found... I found these big boots in my closet from about 10 years ago when I was going out to clubs and they have heels like that. And the minute I put them on, I just felt like this person. And then from there, knowing each one of these cast members and getting to spend time with them and being in this, the desert, in the middle of nowhere, I got very protective over them. And it just fed into everything I thought and did as Natalie. Like I went out there for one reason, but I ended up being like a whole, having a whole other experience and it like, it mirrored what was happening in the film in real life, so, or the other way around. You know what I mean. Okay, that's what I got. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure we've all noticed that Tallulah's character is a little bit strange. You know, she kind of has her own thing. She has a wand and I mean, at the audition, when I read the script, my dad was telling me about the film. Hi, Mick Gomez, who played Phoenix over there. Um, he was telling me about the Phoenix. film. Phoenix. 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 Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I told him, I sat him down, and I was like, I don't want to do this if you're getting me the job. Like, at all. Like, I just, I, I don't care. I just don't want to do it. And he, like, he said, okay, and I did my audition. And I'm really happy that I actually got it because we had so much fun together. I mean, I had no idea how to prepare for this like strange girl with a wand, but I hope I did okay. I also auditioned for the role of Doris, but I didn't do it. And Victor's like, how about Mike? Okay, well, good. Uh, actually, I worked on a movie with Jaime called 16 to Life, and he called me in and said, you should come into audition. I did, and, and Victor um, said, you know, with his character, let's treat his beliefs like a religion. And once I got that in my head, I was like, that's it. That's the direction to go with Mike. So that's what carried me through. So thank you. Um, my favorite thing about crazy and or incompetent people is that they're not aware that they're crazy or incompetent. <laughs> So I just, you know, I went after Shaniqua like that. She thinks she's fabulous at what she does, and she has no idea that the contrary is true. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Thank you. What was the question? Right. What's your favorite color? Purple and gold. And what is your quest? Yeah. What is your quest? That's right. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> the question is, you know, why, why is Felix such a bastard? I said, oh. uh, I think the idea that that was attractive was it's somebody who's cynical and doesn't believe in anything. And he found something to believe in, and I think that's what we're all searching for, something to believe in. And I still don't know. Yeah, Jaime approached me uh, with this, with the, the project, and um, I produced um, 
something called 2012 conference back in 2008. So I think Jaime knew that I was interested in the, the subject of the apocalypse and you know things like the end of the world. In fact, this evening, a couple of the speakers from 2012 conference, some incredible uh, authors and teachers are in the audience who are who've made cameos in the movie. Brian Kniep uh, from the Ethereum Society, Sean Morton, an incredible author, and Mike Barra, an incredible author as well. These guys are, you know, are really at the forefront of the 2012 subject matter and are, are in the film. You know, but you know, for me, I, I just like to share, you know, I work with my uh, uh, scripts with my, my lovely wife, Beverly Leach, who's like this incredible script consultant and uh, an actress. And we, we, really, we really crystallized the idea that each of these characters in the movie were going through their own personal apocalypses. So, you know, it's a story, it's this ensemble of these characters coming together in this household, you know, but it, at the core of this film as well is that subject of, you know, of the fear of death, which, you know, we all connect with, the fear of the end, and, um, and the madness that, uh, that that can bring, or the different emotions that, uh, that erupt and evolve from that. And uh, I, I think that the, the film really captures a lot of that, and uh, in a very independent way, and compared to like this master mass budget 2012, which came out last year, you know, this kind of hits the subject matter in a really cool, original, independent uh, perspective. Thank you. Uh, for me, um, I, I originally auditioned for the part of the, uh, the drunk pedophile uh, uh, husband, which would have required some, uh, some research. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up getting uh, uh, the part of, um, of Bauer, uh, which is uh, a close friend, and they have a kind of a, is that a camera? I gotta find my light, because, you know, I, I, need, I need light when I talk, you know, dark skin absorbs. But, um, so anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, it just so happens that I know Jaime, and Jaime and I, we play basketball together, and, and we sometimes have this kind of, love-hate relationship on the court. So when it came to uh, play this part, I didn't find it that difficult because we did have a relationship already, and that relationship was something we could transfer on film. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> These guys are lovely, my best friends. Made me look good, that's all I can say. And I also want to uh, make a note about uh, the work that uh, Jaime uh, helped with as a producer. Uh, I think the first thing that uh, happened was we sat down over at Mel's, we started drinking, of course just Coke, and uh, talking about how we're going to put this together. And uh, as we sat down and started casting, 